that the federal government and most of the liberal establishment is absolutely determined to do everything possible to sabotage Donald Trump's re-election campaign is really not beyond dispute any longer. And that amazingly includes breaking a long-standing taboo against the current government prosecuting the leading opposition candidate as well as a prior president. Now, I'm never one who believed in the validity of this taboo. I've always thought that high-ranking political officials, even if they're the president of the United States, ought to be treated the same as ordinary citizens under the law. That is, when they break the law, they ought to be treated the same. But this clearly is not what's happening in this case. This is an establishment that is petrified at the prospect that Donald Trump will be reelected. They regarded 2016 as the most cataclysmic moment in American political history, and they were openly determined in 2020 to do whatever they had to do to make sure that Trump wasn't reelected to the point that, as we've gone over many times, when reporting surfaced that was highly incriminating of Joe Biden and his integrity, the CIA joined with the corporate media simply to lie and invent a, a lie that it was Russian disinformation that this evidence was, even though it was genuine, authentic, and big tech colluded to censor this reporting from reaching the hands of the American people. That's how desperate they were. They also, of course, manufactured the Russiagate scandal that dominated and drowned our politics in the Trump presidency for almost three years, only for Robert, Robert Mueller, the exact pr prosecutor they wanted, who was armed with the supposed dream team of American prosecutors and unlimited funds to conduct an 18-month investigation only to end up indicting exactly zero Americans on the core charge that gave rise to that investigation that was at the heart of the conspiracy theory that the Trump campaign colluded with the Russian government in order to interfere illegally in the 2016 campaign. And Mueller himself in his investigative report admitted they could find no evidence to establish evidence of that core crime. The crime that the media had drowned American politics in for years as a result of their desperation to destroy the Trump presidency. And they are equally petrified, as they should be, about the very real prospect Donald Trump can be reelected in 2024. Joe Biden's going to be 82. He's visibly in cognitive decline. And Donald Trump this time doesn't have to run as an incumbent. He has to run again as a challenger to the status quo, which is what he was able to do in 2016 to great success. And a poll released just today shows that even though they've now charged Trump with two separate indictments, as well as got him found guilty on a civil charge involving claims of sexual assault, he has a bigger lead than ever in this poll when it comes to every other candidate in the Republican field and is tied with Joe Biden, 43-43, even though, needless to say, the entire media is lined against him. And tonight he has his third indictment. So what the political effects are of this indictment seems pretty clear. It seems unlikely to have much of a political effect, except that it helps Donald Trump because his supporters and many members of the Republican Party who were prepared to consider other candidates perceive that our institutions are fundamentally corrupted. It's not a fringe view. It's a widespread view. It's available and visible in many, many polls. And the perception obviously is that attempts to prosecute Donald Trump for political crimes is the byproduct of an abuse of the justice system and not evidence that Donald Trump committed crimes. We saw the same thing in the Clinton years when, Donald, when Bill Clinton ended up being in, meshed in all sorts of legal proceedings around his lies about Paula Jones and sexual harassment and the like, and it really never ended up hurting him politically because there was a perception that it was kind of a witch hunt, that that was about his personal life. Whether you agree with that or not, Americans care about their material well-being, and these crimes are not the kind of crimes that they typically get angry about in terms of involving violence or embezzlement or bribery. These are all very classical political crimes that involve, at best, dubious interpretations of law, and people seem to be perceiving that. 